all right so we've dried out a little bit we got rain uh and i stopped plowing but uh i think we're gonna finish it off we probably got oh it's about four acre field so we probably got i don't know two acres left to plow and then of course the headlands but yeah i think i finished her off with the a and uh there's a couple of things that i need to explain so there's no confusion Okay, two things in particular. I have rear wheel weights on this and those tires are loaded. Yes, a Farmall A has loaded tires. Uh, I assume it's calcium. I, I honestly don't know what he put in there. Next time I see him, I could ask him. But uh, this is another one of them deals where it's like the tank's never been flushed or cleaned out or anything of the sort. I don't see a whole lot of negativity going on in that sediment bowl. It is yellow. The bowl itself is yellow. The old yeller. Um, which, which could indicate, you know, older fuel or just stain. But in order to sustain its place on this farm, I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use it like a tractor. It's more than just a little helper here. It pulls more than just its fair share of weight, too. All right, let's get her all fired up. No choke, no choke. It's about 80 degrees out. Shouldn't need it. Maybe I will. I don't know. I smell gas. We'll go choke. Huh. If I was betting, man, I'd say we got another burnout switch. I burned one out. Uh, I bought two of these because these are the ones I could find. But I did buy one that I thought was OEM. And as it turns out, it was made in Taiwan. It looks OEM, but it was made in Taiwan. And if I can't get her started, I'll flip the switch and put that pseudo OEM switch in. And I think we'll be a go. But these are these are pretty cheap. Um, if I'm not working this tractor under under load, and when I say under load, I'm talking relative load, like spraying, or well, I guess it isn't just relative load when you're pulling a, a 214 little genius. Uh, for whatever reason, this burns out, and I don't know if it's it has to do with the tractor or what the deal is. But yeah, it happens. All right, well, I got her started, and it was really weird. No choke, all right, and I throttled clear down to nothing, and I popped smoke, and I fired it up again, throttled down to nothing, popped smoke. About a couple times of that, tried choking it, nothing, didn't pop smoke. Went up about three, four notches right into here, uh, which would be about, oh, a quarter throttle, and it finally took off so i don't know uh it did rain the tractor did sit out i don't know if there's got some water in there i i don't have a can of sea foam i should have picked some up i would love 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 to dump me a can of sea foam in this thing and uh get the crud out of it when they don't run hard they just they grow gremlins man and that's the only way i can put it but we're still going to try to plow with it see what happens I may still run and get a can of sea foam dump in it. Well, we're plowing and she's a running. We're just putting along in first gear, strong gear. And uh, if, this, if I was ever going to pull this tractor, it's all you do is put her in first and go. Go till she don't. But we're down in furrow now, so let's have a look ski.
on this field there's just a it's, it's basically a flat field okay flat ground but it comes here and there's just a slight gradient here and I noticed the difference between first and second gear just pulling those two bottoms those two 14s up that just slight incline in first gear it made no sputter at all in second you could just feel something different going on pulling that up hill so you know it's a slow and steady wins the race i know there was a lot of guys that swear up and down now that they saw me pull the little genius two bottom with my a they're gonna go and get a little genius two bottom for their a and keep in mind if you are going to set your tractor up to plow yeah unless it's perfectly flat ground you're going to be in first gear 90 percent of the time second if it's flat but you're going to have to set it up so that it can pull two bottoms it's a one bottom tractor so it's twice of what it calls for so you know if the m's a three bottom it'd be almost the equivalent of, of it pulling a five bottom so that's a lot of bottoms for an a if you want to get an a and set it up for two bottoms load your rears weight your rears get some get some wheel weights in the front of those steers and i think you'll be okay but slow and steady wins the race i wouldn't want to use the rig this setup for more than probably five acres it's it's fun it's a lot of fun i wait all winter for this okay so this isn't agonizing to me fun so i don't mind doing it uh got a little bit more to go let's go let's grow all right she quit on me yep too legit to quit but she did it anyways and uh what i did was i pulled this drain plug off the carburetor and no gas was coming out so i popped this line and gas rushed out so if i was a guessing man there should be a screen in here uh like on the mo most of the carburetors the h the m they all have mesh like a copper mesh screen upon entrance into the carburetor so i'm guessing that's clogged it's the only explanation as to why nothing would come out of the carburetor is if this screen here is clogged so that's what i'm doing um this tractor really before it ever got brought to the field needed gone through all right and it just sits in the barn it's out of sight it's not out of mind but it doesn't sit in the red shed and that kind of puts it in a neglectful state uh, I haven't really done a lot to this I changed the rear end fluid the engine oil and the spark plug so far I haven't gone over the fuel system at all um, but we are getting fuel from the tank to the bull to the carb it's the carb itself right now acting stupid so that's what I'm gonna address I'm gonna pull this line off there right here and uh, and then gonna pull this one to this elbow and I'll show you what I got all right pull her off of here um once i get this system figured out and cleaned out i'm definitely going to put an inline in it i just need to take these tractors one piece at a time and i don't care if it costs me a dime because they're worth it this is this is the the point where i do am willing to spend money i should say all right Come on. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay. Took that drain plug off the bottom of the carb, not a drop. And I thought, well, the tank's probably clogged. And when I popped this line, it gushed out. So that tells you there's a screen right in there and clogged up it should be, is my guess. All right. Boy, it's hanging, clinging on to the last couple threads there. And then I should be able to slide that right up the line. No, that's just the, that's the lock of nuts. So we're going to take this elbow off of there. See what kind of present we got. There we go. I don't care if I have to replace these fittings either. I really don't. Honestly, I probably should take the carburetor off there and just rebuild it. Now, how are you going to stop on me right there? I got bad news for it. 
it's coming off of there. Real bad news. All right, let's see what we got. The surprise mystery box. Uh, now, now we go. Okay. I can't tell if that's. Get my glasses on. Now, I blew through this, blew through the top. Uh, I'm looking in the mesh. It looks clean to me. So we got we got something bigger going on here. All right, I'm gonna drop this uh, plug again and see if I can blow down through it. See what's going on. Why are you running out? Oh, uh, just excess. In excess. Yeah, we got good flow, like say from the tank. It's not the bowl at all. It's not any of that. I mean, this has me a little bit concerned. Uh, I I have had this bowl off of here before and uh man i mean I, I don't know you know it's like you don't know until you know well, let me get some air into this carb and see what happens oh nothing spectacular happened let's put this drain plug back in put everything back together except for well yeah i can put that line back on there it's a marvel. This is this is one of the better carburetors. It ain't Chinese made. Not that the Chinese made carburetors don't work. They indeed do. Um, but I like original stuff. All right. Yeah, like I say, that screen. I mean, it's it's clean. You know, and nothing in the sediment bowl. I don't think the tanks overly dirty i really don't if there's a problem i don't think it's in the tank i think it's in the carb here and anytime you drop that bowl it should drain out especially with the petcock open it should have ran out just as fast as it ran in she didn't so we'll get to the bottom of it well here's what i figured out uh, i took the bowl off i actually did clean that out and it did have some light light particles of rust in it not to the point of concern. I don't think this tank is as bad as many on this farm, but I ordered a rebuild kit for this, so I will be pulling this carburetor off, and uh, it really needs thrown in an ultrasonic cleaner for a couple hours at least with simple green and uh, clean all them ports out real well. I think I got a bad float. Um, that is just absolutely my guess. It doesn't matter anyways because it's getting a new kit thrown in it So I'm gonna pull that sucker off of there and just wait for the new carb Kit to come in Okay, so let me not assume that everybody understands the internal workings of a carburetor that watches these videos um, We got a lot of rain So anyway, so there's a float in there and it kind of looks like my two fingers and just imagine these fingers being floaty things and then kind of the top of in between those two fingers there is a needle valve up in here and what that float does is it goes down it calls for fuel comes up closes the needle valve stops the call for fuel drops down calls for fuel not not quite that much it's probably more like this you know keeping the fuel steady but just to over exaggerate the float goes down calls for fuel comes up but anyways that needle valves going in and out as that float goes up and down okay there's nothing coming out of this carburetor that tells me that needle valve is stuck closed up in that seat now likely that the the floats sticking down but the needle valve is stuck up and a lot of that what has to do with is the fact that it sat all winter did put non-ethanol in this but it it doesn't matter um the reality is, is the person that owned it before me probably ran ethanol fuel in this and that carburetor has some gum in it and a little bit of stickiness. I did put some sea foam in it just now uh, off camera, and uh, but the thing of it is, it's not going to do me a lot of good except for in the tank if I can't run it through the carb. So the thing to do is take this off just like I had it, blow some carb cleaner in there, some light taps, try to loosen up, get that uh, needle valve to unseat itself and uh, start moving again. But I will tell you this much, 
in all my time of messing with carburetors on these Farmall tractors, that is a very, very temporary fix. And the permanent fix is, is to put a new kit in this, just rebuild it, clean it very, very good. Um, I've, I've seen guys, you know, they tear these apart and just put the new seat and needle valve in and they're good to go as long as their float's good. Uh, I've also seen it to where for whatever reason somebody gets these apart and um, you can spread the the float apart and sometimes it'll rub on the side of the carburetor not float up and down properly either so kind of want to watch that so what did I do I checked my screen it was clear and uh, then you just go through the steps it's it's gonna be your needle valve that's gonna be the problemo so it's sat a while and uh, I'm gonna try to actually start it because I think there may be a slow drip into this carb out of here filling this up and I think we might be able to pop smoke with it in the event that there is fuel in here um, but yeah it's a needle valve all right so let's see what we got here throttle down that's what worked yesterday there you go fire it up okay now what that's gonna allow me to do is get some of that sea foam in that carburetor and uh, I don't know maybe loosen up the seat but still a kits kits a common and it's been overdue there you go ski I'm gonna let her run. Bulls clean. Come on, sea foam. Get in that carburetor. Yeah, so now I got her running good. And uh, what that's gonna do is allow me to get that sea foam from the tank to the bowl into the carb. And hopefully that'll buy me a little bit of time until the kit gets here in, I don't know, three to four days is at least what they said. Somebody left a comment on my uh, Farmall M carburetor adjustment video. And there's only so many things you can say in these videos. They're 15, 20 minutes long. I can't provide you with a dissertation. But, uh, you know, he said, oh, it'll run for a while and then, and then stop. I said, well, you got a needle valve problem too, most likely. Uh, again, you could buy yourself some time with some sea foam, but you really need to rebuild it. Oh, it was rebuilt. Well. Whoever rebuilt it probably didn't do it right. And when I say that, doing it right means you clean that really, really good. A lot of guys, they use carb cleaner and air. And uh, actually, when I blew air into this, I blew air into this carb here and down at the bottom. All I used was one of those cans of uh, electronic duster air cans. And it's got a handle on it. And you just squeeze it, just blew it right in there. And then uh, I, I blew a uh, carb cleaner in the hole, the top hole there, and then let that settle for a while and blew air in it again. I mean, and then a couple light taps, you know, somebody will say, oh, don't use a three pound hammer to beat on it. That's true. Some light taps. You can use whatever you got. It's like this, that needle valve's either gonna move or it's not. Just depends on how gummed up you are. But, uh, I, again, it's not a tank issue. It's definitely not a tank issue. I've never had that bowl off of there uh, except just now, and it wasn't bad at all. So we got a runner, and we're going to let her run and get, like I say, get that sea foam in there. Good running tractor, otherwise, you know, but you just got to have it. You got to go through these machines. They're not, they're not just going to continue to give, 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 give and you put nothing into them and that ain't how it works so yep so what i'm gonna do now that i got it running i'm gonna at least pull it into the red shed where i can be out of the rain and uh still work on it and man did we get rain let me show you what we got all right those of you that have been with the channel a while know this is my back pasture and this is french creek and it's up and over the banks, well over the banks and running through the pasture. That's part of the creek coming through. And uh, we haven't had flooding like this since uh, we had a tornado in, oh, it was about 
oh, what's the date? Probably a week from now in 2013, we had a tornado come through and just mad amounts of rain. I don't know what the rainfall was, but in order for us to be flooded like this, we had to get six, seven, eight inches solid. And we got it all in about three or four hours, maybe five. And uh, any low-lying area in this area is flooded out. And uh, let me let me give you a quick peek of the field. Oh, I see a duck back there, <laughs> a wood duck. And this is the big field here. And you can see this is a drainage ditch coming down through and it's plumb full. So right there where it's at, it's probably three and a half feet deep. Um, and yeah, this is this is where I was disking with the with the super c a few videos ago and i see some canuck geese out there doing their thing but <laughs> we got hammered i mean we were just getting dry i mean to the point where it was like another day i was definitely pulling a grain drill hands down and uh i'm looking at the weather report now and we're dry tomorrow we're dry tuesday but i, I don't think it's gonna matter it's gonna take it's gonna take a few days now i do get dry quick here but it's not gonna matter. It's gonna take it's gonna take a week to get this down to where you can even walk. I wouldn't even want to walk in the field there at all. I mean, I've got you know areas that are plowed, areas that aren't plowed, and uh, but yeah, this is bad. This is 2013 levels, nine years ago. Now we got some tight quarters here. The Super C's hogging all the space. I don't even know what gear I'm in. Well, I guess I'm in first. There we go. There we go, Steve. Just gonna let that run. Well, it's red and it's in the shed. And the shed is red too, so that don't count. Yeah, she running. Checking those fittings, making sure I got them nice and tight. A lot of people, you know, they put Teflon tape and stuff around there. That's a no-go. That stuff, you know, get any particles and stuff and it gets down in your jets. No, thank you. So I did end up putting the better switch on there. I do consider these a little bit better. They're, they run, they're pretty good, about 40 bucks. Uh, but they last longer. They, they can just take the heat a little bit better than them $10 ones or probably now 20. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video. I got some fun tinkering to do with the ASD. Get her purring like a kitten and didn't lose its mitten. It never stops. Red power. Boom!